a la locura. Y se me que Story time episode 4. Y ahora yo pensando en ti por ahí, perdido en la ciudad pensando en ti. Yo, story time episode 4. It's about to be a zuvi. I need y'all to tune in. Gather around the campfire. Bring your parents. Tell your auntie. Bring your dirty ass roommate. Bring them badass kids. Sit down. Story time episode 4. I'm gonna tell y'all about the time where I almost died in the TSA Dallas airport. Y'all ready? Let's get it. I let you into my diary to admire me. Welcome to Story Time Episode 4. I'm excited. I got a new background. Y'all see that? It's a little wrinkly, but I don't find my iron, so y'all gonna have to deal with it. My shirt today, I don't want y'all to think I got soft because I'm wearing pink. Because this is not pink. This is my ocecho. Alright? Have some respect. And subscribe to my channel because if you don't and I see you, you, you catching the RKO. You don't know what that is? YouTube that. So, today I'm going to tell you about the time I damn near died in Texas. I thought I was the man. I pulled up to the party like I thought I was Travis Scott. It didn't work out that way for me, guys. We all have a story of a time that we got so blacked out, disgustingly drunk, that you embarrass your entire family lineage. So, a lot of you guys know I'm a part of this travel club, and we travel a lot, right? I was on a trip to Dallas for business. But, the last day of the trip, we actually had a huge party. I'm over there in Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm with my friend Tossy. You guys know him. We travel a lot. And uh, one thing I do not believe in, I will never agree with this, is going to a location, a club, a lounge, I don't care what it is, and paying mad money for some bum-ass drinks. <sighs> I'm all about the pregame. Call me broke. Call me cheap. Call me whatever you want. But one thing you're not going to call me is sober, okay? Whenever you see me at a party, and I'm there to party, don't, you, you're not going to see me getting drinks. I already drank them! You imagine if everybody, before they went to a party, they pre-gamed? People would be getting pregnant by 9 p.m. This night was no different. I'm in Dallas. There's no liquor stores open. The party was on Sunday night. There's no liquor stores open on Sunday in Dallas. They're very religious over there. They Chick-fil-A the whole state. I say, yo, Tossie, let's go to the gas station. Let's see what they got. Maybe they got some beers or something. We could swig them down real quick on our drive there. I do not know the exact name of the demon that was inside my body when I went to pick my selection for my drink. But whatever it was, it knew what it was doing that night. This is the drink that I damn picked out the fridge. A damn Four Locos. These shits are like illegal in 20 states. So, I ordered two big cans, like Arizona-sized cans of Four Locos, and we in the Uber now. I'm in there with Tossie. He's looking at me like, bro, why are you doing that to yourself? And me, on the drive there, I'm like, yo, I gotta finish these two big old cans. Because I can't pull up to the party to the line with some F Four Locos. Somebody's gonna spit on me. I'm not having it. So I'm in the back of the Uber, down in the shit. Like, it's spilling down my cheek. And as I'm drinking, I just feel a thunderstorm. Feel like a hurricane brewing up in my stomach. And I'm like, ugh. This don't feel right. This don't feel good. Four locals, if y'all watching this, please. What the fuck? What are y'all doing? And I know it's a teenage drink. You shouldn't be drinking that unless you're going to like a teen bash. Or a hooky party. But for me, it was my last resort. So. Get out the Uber. I'm waiting in the line for the club, and I feel my stomach rumbling. God, please protect me tonight. Please don't let nothing stupid happen to me tonight, because I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have drank that. You're right. But please, you know, like, forgive me real quick. The guy checks my bracelet. I run inside. I, I'm not looking for no bar. I'm not looking for no party, no women, no nothing. I'm looking for the bathroom, Okay. Because I had that evil spirit brewing inside me. It was marinating. It was creating a lot of drama in my spirit. And for about the first 15 to 20 minutes of my night in that party, as soon as I walked in, nobody could find me. Because I was in the damn bathroom taking a squat dump. 
If y'all don't know what a squat dump is, it's good. It's good for your legs because I don't know who put their big old ass on that toilet. Okay, so I'm not gonna uh, put my skin on that same toilet. Okay, that's nasty. That's nasty. Don't do that shit. Okay, it's 2017. Learn the techniques. Be crafty. So after about 20 minutes of this squat dump. I get up, my legs is trembling now, right? I'm tired now. I just did a whole leg day, basically. But my stomach feel relieved. Boom. So I'm there with my boy Tossie. My sister Iris Bo is there. A bunch of our friends are there. We just all chilling, having a good time, you know, talking and vibing out. And right when the party started to get good, they say, yo, party is over. It was 2 a.m. And in Dallas, 2 a.m. is like 7 a.m. And he says this. He says, yo, we out to this other spot. This person right here, whenever he says that, yo, we out to another location, you don't have to question it. It's going to be way better than where you are at right now. It's just going to, like, the level of ratchetness is going to go up by at least four levels. I don't know what it is about people that's named Jesus, but they are the opposite of people who are Christ-like. So we get in the Uber, we go to the spot. It's a lounge. I'm there. My sister's there also. Tossy is not there. He left. He said, yo, I got to catch a flight in the morning. I said, yo, that's cool, bro. Enjoy your flight. I know how it is when you got to take catch an early flight, bro. It's whack. You know, you don't want to get one hour of sleep and then be on the airplane drunk. He was like, word, I'm out. I dab Tossy. I said, yo, I see you in New York, bro. Be safe. So now we get to the lounge. They give me the aux cord. I'm a beast on the aux cord. Ask around, right? Like 99% wins on the aux cord. We're chilling, we're having a good time. I'm feeling nice off of the Four loco still, right? And then my night took a turn for the worse. I felt a dark energy enter the lounge that night. This person walks in. Do you guys know him? Have you guys seen him? His name is Victor. Some people call him Vic Vice. Think of that word. Think of that name. I've watched this dude. I've watched this dude the past like four years that I know him literally drink beers like if there was holy water. I watched him do it all. I watched him drink so much one time in DR, he died. Like I, I watched him die on a hammock somewhere. I watched his spirit fly away. But he was playing a weed on his way up to heaven. And I was like, because I was drunk too. I was like, yo, <laughs> yo, that's my dude right there. Yo, I'm going to see you again one day, you know? He came back to life. He resurrected. And he was drinking again. Yo, i never seen some shit like that ever. So ever since that day, I had crazy respect for this dude. He has a gallon. Not a regular bottle. Not a personal bottle. Not even a standard party-sized bottle. He had a gallon of Jack Daniels. <sighs> the music started bumping. The vibe started to get right. And you know, when all of those things connect, the vibe, the people, the energy, it's like, yo, this night could turn into a Zuvi. Should I participate? Yes! Absolutely! Vic comes up to me. He says, yo, you want some of this Jack? I said, hell yeah! Give me that damn Jack. I didn't take a shot. I didn't pour a little drink. I didn't pour it into no Coca-Cola. I didn't have no chaser. I grabbed the whole gallon just like this. And I went like this. <clears throat> oh. I chugged it. You ever seen a damn Gatorade commercial when they chug in the Gatorade? A thirsty athlete? That's how I chugged this bottle of Jack. And I remember Vic Vice looked at me with his eyes open like, yo. And when I saw that he looked at me like that, I was concerned. Because when an expert is concerned at something you're doing in their field, you should be concerned. Okay, if I'm in an airplane and there's a little bit of turbulence, people around me are scared, but I see that the flight attendants is chilling, I'm chilling too. Because they're the experts, they know. But if I'm in an airplane and I see that the flight attendant is running around screaming and crying, I'm going to lose my shit. 
I'm going to start crying too because they know something. They do this all of the time. That's when I'm going to start praying. And when I see Invictus face do that, I was concerned because I said, this man knows what I did was wrong. So after I took those gulps, I went on about my night. I left Victor and them there. I spoke to them briefly. I had a few conversations with a few people. I do not remember the convos. I just remember me sitting down. I was sitting on a chair and I felt my spirit start to drift away from my body. Just completely blanked out. And I felt my spirit leave my body and my spirit was just looking at me like, Yo! What are you doing? You're not gonna black out on this chair right here, bro. It's 20... You're not gonna do that in this year. This year we didn't have no plans for you to black out in a random chair in a random lounge in Dallas, Texas. That wasn't in our goals. That was not in our go list of goals for the year. I was able to text, shoot a text to my sister Iris Bell because I knew she was somewhere in the vicinity and I needed help. But I wasn't going to yell, HELP! And I put, yo. Because I don't care how f fucked up you are, you could write the words, yo. It's Y-O. I think I took like a quick 60 second nap and I came back to life. And I texted her back, I said, yo, help me. That's all I wrote, help me. Now look. If somebody writes help me to you and that's all they write, you should be concerned, okay? My sister comes and she like wakes me up and she's like, yo, let's go outside. We walk outside to the back and I start vomiting my life away. Vomiting, 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 vomiting. And you know when you're trying to vomit yourself, you trying to vomit. So I went, I put my damn fist down my throat, I start hurling. And I remember I look up, guess what I seen? Vic Vice, he was there. Like a guardian angel of some sort. He was like, yo, don't worry, it's going to be okay. And when I heard him say that, it was just kind of like when the flight attendant will walk up to your seat and says, listen, don't worry, it's going to be okay. That's exactly how it felt. I said, all right, cool, we lit. Let me just, I fucked up. We lit, but, you know, let me just finish throwing up and make sure I get home good. So I finished throwing up, and, like, I start having the linguine legs. Like, I can't even really walk right. But in the back of my mind, the sober, the I had a thought in my mind. I said, yo, you know what? I'm going to just go to my hotel room and sleep it off. You know, and I could wake up in the morning for my flight and I could just be good. I remember Iris Bo looks at me. She says, Andy, we're not going to your hotel room. You don't have a chance to sleep this off. We're not going to your hotel room. Our flight leaves in an hour and a half. What? I don't get a chance to wash my face. I don't get a chance to recuperate. I gotta go blacked out drunk to TSA right now? She says yes. Now listen, from this point to the next point where I, recu where I gain my conscience again, I don't remember it. So, I'm gonna have my sister Iris Bell tell you guys from this point to where I regain my consciousness, okay? First of all, I was fucked up too. So it was a drunk person, drunk one and drunk two. Drunk one was taking <laughs> care of drunk two. And then we got in a book. We had to go to the hotel to pack and then his girlfriend was sleeping in the room and she almost came downstairs and killed him, number one. None of his stuff was packed. I had to just throw all his stuff in the bag. Mind you, he's downstairs with the Uber driver, first of all. Oh my God, I can still kill you for this. <laughs> Mind you, we was running. We would have missed a flight by like 20 minutes. Damn. Give me mine. Now you gotta give me another one. Give me mine. Give me mine, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so what you want is? <laughs> it took us about 45 minutes to get to the airport. And you want to know why it took us 45 minutes? Because <laughs> my lovely <laughs> brother. In the middle of the highway, he decides to say, I want to throw up. I said, Andy, I'm drunk. I will leave your ass in this airport and you will miss your flight. And I told him, the TSA will lock you up <laughs> if they find you drunk. And he said, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, I'm good, I'm good. Mind you, no, he wasn't good, all right? We at the airport, TSA, I'm dragging him like this, literally. And, yo, he's, look, look. I got to drag him like this. I'm dragging him. So as we're going, he has on a hoodie, right? 
So you gotta demonstrate what you did because uh -huh. you know what you did. So zip it up. I say, yo, bro, we're about to hit TSA. I just need you to focus real quick so we could go. TSA, you can knock out once you get to your seat by the terminal. You so sold me on that. That was a dream. I know, I nigga. <laughs> Sounds good, like, right? Yo, Andy, just this right here. As soon as you get to your seat, you can knock out. You're going to be good. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so we allowed the TSA, right? Mind you, everybody just, everybody's just leaving the party. So everybody that was at the party with us was at the airport. Also at TSA. That's sad. So, it's what he do, right? Step one. Oh, man, nah, it's good. Step one. He said, yo, I got the up. I said, all right, cool. Right? Y'all watching? <laughs> right? No, do it! I went just like this, y'all. And he threw up. <laughs> so, I said, Andy, <laughs> you know you gotta take your hoodie off for TSA, right? <laughs> But let me tell y'all something. The the like I was mad, I was furious, and I'm 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 like this is my brother, but I'm about to leave him in the airport because he was irresponsible. I was mad. I really wanted to kill him. <laughs> Thank you, Irisbo. Irisbo, I love you. I'm sorry I put you through that, but she. Got me back to life, got me to thinking. I caught a peaky, I'm like, <clears throat> tight. I'm, I'm so mad I'm in this predicament right now, bro. But I deserve it, right? Because I wanted to act like a damn asshole. I deserve it. I'm just, my eyes are halfway open and I'm just concentrating on my feet. I'm like, yo, just don't step on nobody and just follow the ropes. Like, <laughs> that's what I was doing. So I'm just there like a dead zombie, like this. I look to my left, I look to my right, I look in front of me, behind me. I'm in the middle of a packed out TSA line. I put my face inside of my hoodie and I went just like this. And I threw up inside my hoodie. And I remember it was all juicy right here. And what I did was I had on an undershirt, had on a shirt under my hoodie. So I just like rubbed the <laughs> just like rubbed the throw up into the cotton so it could like grab it like a sponge and I remember as nasty as that was I didn't care I wanted to survive I wanted to live I wanted to make it to New York walk through the thing I remember I walked in there I threw the rock up I said Rockefeller Records we in this bitch and I remember I walk out and I'm just waiting and I'm just there kind of just dangling, just holding on for my life like this. And I remember the TSA agent is just looking at me like, motherfucker. And it felt like the longest 10 seconds of my life. He finally said, go. I said, yes, we out. I keep walking. I grab my stuff. I was just done with me. She's not even talking to me, bro. How sick of me she is. She's not even talking to me. So I get to my seat. I find it. I see it. I'm dead. I said, wake me up when this plane lands. Guess who walks into the plane? Tossy. After he left me in the club talking about, y'all got an early flight, I should have said, yeah, me too. Now, Tossy walks into the plane. He sees me, right? I'm in my seat dead like this. But my heavy ass arm is linked over my chair into the next person's chair. And there was a lady there. He said that my hand was dangling in her face like this and she was kind of like this you know when you like not trying to wake somebody up because they bothering you she was probably really nice if that flight was out of new york somebody would have been snatched my arm clean off she was like this he said trying to avoid it and i know my hand smelled like mad throw up because i had it in my throat throwing up all night so he said that she was like this and I was linked over with my hand caressing her damn neck. And Tossie came and he moved my arm, put it back where it's supposed to be. And he looked at me and he said, damn, boy. Boy, washed up. So I don't remember much of that plane ride. I remember waking up from time to time, regaining my consciousness and throwing up. I'm in the airplane throwing up, guys. Like, imagine you sitting next to somebody and they're throwing up at their feet. 
It's, it was disgusting. And I remember I looked. The middle seat was open. He was sitting on the aisle and his body was just like turned. Like, you ever just like get on the train and somebody like somebody stink and you just like, mm. that's what he was doing when I looked at him. He was just like turned around like, ugh. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> get out of the airplane, finally get outside. I'm like, Shh. my only ride is my mom. My mom is coming to pick me up and I'm still drunk. I'm trying to sober up. <laughs> Let's go, my mom is coming, time to sober up. Cause I don't want her to think I'm some irresponsable. Why? Why? Then when my mom look at me, I said, si un tía. That is the fastest way to get your damn chin smacked off your face. I said that. What is my problem? What is wrong with me? And I remember my little sister was in the front seat. She looked back like, you dead ass. And I was. I really was dead ass. There's just so many moments in my life where my mom could have just took me out, just snapped my neck. It took me about two days to recover from this, guys. So, that's my story time episode four. What should you learn from this? Do not chug Jack Daniels out the gallon. Don't do it. Take better care of yourself. Last episode, I said, don't do dumb shit. I'm speaking from experience, okay? I love y'all. Subscribe to my YouTube. I'm going to be putting out content every week. My Instagram, putting stuff out every day to bring laughter and joy to this tough world that we living in. Feel me? So, I have a few tips for y'all. I'm going to leave y'all with this. You have an idea you've been thinking about? You scared it might not work? Do that shit! Stop playing games. Tomorrow might be your last day. Thanks for watching. I love y'all. Cause I had the flow in the style way before I even had a label. And this is the flow I was on when my niggas was still all I'm shaking. And too many people can vouch for me. Ain't no reason to be faking.